the Golden Globes just happened where comedian uh, Joe Coy, who happens to be my favorite comedian in the world right now, even though he made one of the worst films I've seen in years in Easter Sunday, <laughs> which was just awful. Um, but he love you. <laughs> famously, on 10 days notice, replaced Cedric the Entertainer and the Vilmer guy from that 70s show <laughs> uh, to do the Golden Globes. Now, there, there's a couple of things about that performance. Number one, it was flat. I mean, it was a flat performance. I think primarily because comedians today on shows like that have to try to play it safe, and he did. But also, I think if he did those exact same jokes in like a 5,000 seat auditorium like the Oscars take place in, rather than in a room with 300 studio execs and movie stars, I think it might've gone over a little bit better. Still, that being said, a lot of comedians have come to Joe Coy's defense lately, saying like people just don't get what it's like trying to do that. You have to please all these different people and all this kind of stuff. Well, a Steve Martin was one of those guys who came out. Well, now Kevin Hart's kind of addressing this, where somebody just asked him if he would consider hosting the Oscars, <clears throat> to which he said this. This comes to us from Variety. Kevin Hart said the following. Whatever little hope you had, I want to destroy it right now. Those gigs aren't good gigs for comics. It's no shot to the Oscars. It's no shot to the Golden Globes or anything else. Just those aren't comedy-friendly environments anymore. I think they got it right one year when there was just like a bunch of personalities acting mm -hmm. as hosts, and that's a nice thing. It's a collaborative thing. Different people get to be responsible for Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, but you know, the days of it being a room for a comic, those days are done. And <clears throat> I think he's absolutely right. Because... As safe, criminally safe, some people would say, that Joe Coy tried to play it, even then, I've read nothing but headlines in a lot of the entertainment trades of, you know, Taylor Swift asked to respond to yeah, the jab taken by Joe Coy. That's guys, <clears throat> th these these trades are, are they're yeah. stretching it. They're and, looking and for And then what's uh, 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 Greta Gerwig? Yeah. You know. She even said uh, Greta Gerwig responds yeah. to uh, and her she, response it wasn't was, a response. But, no, but it was all these trades. Like all these trades are like, oh my goodness, you took a shot at. He never took a they shot. They didn't even at Taylor care. Swift. He never took a shot at no Greta Gerwig. But like all this stuff is oh somebody was the button of a joke and like they made it this big thing. So they're kind of like fostering this thing <laughs> yeah. where you can't tell jokes. And of course we just go back to the Oscars the other year when Chris Rock told a joke and got physically attacked on stage. And then some fucking idiots actually defending the fact that he got physically attacked on stage for telling a joke. Um, Maybe that's the bar now. You have to get slapped in order for it. To yes, <laughs> for it to really be something, you got to get physically assaulted. And I just think Kevin Smith or Kevin Hart is right about this, that these award ceremonies... They're not the place for stand-up comics anymore. It's it's just not a place for it. So so where do we go from here, John? What do you think? <laughs> if it is if it if this is really where it's headed, no host, just 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 straightforward host that just announced the the award and honestly, then give them... I think that's it exactly. No more I monologues. Think, listen, no more monologues. I think. Look, I've thought for a long time, and I've been very alone in this because sometimes it's lonely being right. But I've thought for a long time that I don't even think, don't get me wrong, I love, um, when Seth MacFarlane hosts the Oscars, I know that hosting gig got, gets a lot of bad rap. I really enjoyed Seth MacFarlane hosting the Oscars. I thought it was really fun. But I've always kind of felt like this is the biggest night of the movie year. Why are we going out and getting either television personalities or stand-up comics to be the host of it? Get a revered movie personality. You know, I, and listen, while it wouldn't be funny, I think it would it would add a different dimension to it. Just go out and get, have George Clooney host the Oscars. Have Denzel Washington host the Oscars. Have, you know, I, I hell, Harrison Ford. And uh, thank you for coming out tonight. I mean, granted, that, that, might be, that one might be a little painful to watch, but still. <laughs> but I, I think maybe the time of them doing comedians, I mean, the only person who'd be safe is Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal, I think, is the only person in Hollywood who could get up on stage and do whatever he wants and everybody would go with it. Wow. But, uh, yeah, I, I think Kevin Hart is right here. I, I, I think it's been proven because 
number one, the industries are now getting really puckered tight in their anal cavity about it. But it's not just them. The audiences, and I'm talking about you people watching at home, I'm talking about everybody who does it, the audiences have become hypercritical of any stand-up comedian doing stuff at award show. It's literally become a no-win situation. So <clears throat> I kind of see where Kevin Hart's coming from. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Masterclass. Everyone, it's a new year. So picture that thing that you've always wanted to learn. Now, picture learning it from a person who's literally one of the best in the world at it. And that's what you get with Masterclass. This year, learn from the best to become your best with Masterclass. Don't just talk about improving. Masterclass helps you actually do it. Because Masterclass offers over 180 world-class instructors. So whether you want to master negotiation with Chris Voss, like I did, think like a boss with Martha Stewart, or learn the the art of storytelling from the man himself, Neil Gaiman. Masterclass has you covered. Because with Masterclass, you get unlimited access to intimate one-on-one -on -one classes with the world's best. At Masterclass, there are over 200 classes to pick from, with new classes being added every month. And if you're a viewer of The John Campus Show, you probably love movie making, storytelling, television. So you'd be totally interested in things like screenwriting from Aaron Sorkin, learn developing original TV series from Stranger Things as the Duffer Brothers, or maybe you like the music side of movies, well you can learn film scoring from Hans Zimmer. And right now, our listeners will get an additional 15% off an annual membership at Masterclass masterclass.com slash campia. Get 15% off right now at masterclass.com slash campia. Masterclass.com slash campia. And maybe it's just time, Rob, to forget the idea of trying to get a comedian to host the event. I, I don't know. What do you think about what Kevin Hart has well, to say? You know, I think, look, obviously you want to keep the atmosphere buoyant and fun. And like, like, Billy Crystal being a movie star, he was on a TV show, he's been on TV shows, and he's a stand-up comic. He had a unique skill set that he was really able to wield well. Same way that Bob Hope used to host the mm -hmm. Oscars. And I think that those were guys that really understood how to how to maneuver in between the 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 difficulties of hosting a show like this. Yeah. But nowadays, what's the scrutiny, it's almost like we're setting these hosts up to fail. You know, the people that we, we, we cast in these roles, it's almost like we expect them to bomb or something. We're not with them anymore. Like, I looked forward to Billy Crystal's opening, jumping through the movies, whatever. Yeah. You know, Oscar, Oscar, Oscar. You know, I, I didn't care what it was. I'm like, I knew I was going to like it. You yeah. know, it was fun. Now, it's like we announced these hosts. Nobody wants to do it. And and there's a whole different attitude. Like it's like mm, let's see how they mess up. Yeah. yeah. And I, well, I'm yeah, like, you either it's like you either you, oh he wasn't very funny or if he's funny he was insulting. So it's like or I she. mean, Ricky Gervais. Mm -hmm. I, I gotta say, I never get tired of going back and watching Ricky Gervais's opening monologues, even though they're all the same thing, because he was so cutting, and we knew he was cutting that nobody could complain because he stated with his jokes exactly what he wanted to state and you couldn't argue that well he succeeded but nowadays it's like what are people supposed to do like you said we're so sensitive everyone's so puckered up no one thinks anything's funny anymore everybody takes it personally it's like oh you can't say that about these people and i i i, I don't know if we'll ever go back to the day where people are having fun that people can allow a comedian to be a comedian it's so weird I think I, I do think people need to like take on the trades a bit going to John's opening point because man even Greta Gerwig Gerwig responded right uh he's not wrong so I mean it's just like they're they're trying to be like ooh what are you gonna do about that and they're yeah, like nothing I, he was right look I you know, I'm often go back to the whole thing that uh, what are the two South Park guys names again Trey and uh, uh, Matt, Matt Stone, Stone and Trey and Parker Matt and, Matt and Trey. I still remember this one time they said this one thing. It's the simplest thing in the world, but I think it's absolutely true. We can either laugh at everything or we can't laugh at anything. And I, I think he's a hundred. I think those guys have always been a hundred percent right about that. We have to be able to laugh at everything or we can't laugh at anything. And <clears throat> I think that's something that uh, has, has been like becoming more and more relevant um, as as time has proceeded, but you know, we'll see. 
Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. You know what I think one of the other tricks is, though? One of the other tricks is that, you know, we mentioned Billy Crystal or a Steve Martin, right? Or even a Ricky Gervais. Because half the time Ricky Gervais was making his most cutting jokes, they were about people who were actually buddies of his. Off camp, like who are actually buddies, or like everybody in the room knows Ricky, yeah. right? And yeah. Ricky knows most of the people that he's making jokes about, and therefore everybody knows it's there's a, a comfort joke. Level. Yeah, there's a comfort right? level. Or Steve Martin, everybody knows Steve Martin, and Steve Martin knows everybody. So when Steve Martin can get on stage and rip a joke about somebody, you know, everybody knows this isn't fun because they know each other. One of the, I still think I know you guys have heard me repeat this about ten times in the last five years. <laughs> my favorite joke ever at the Oscars. It was Steve Martin and he was doing his opening monologue and he said, to me, hosting the Oscars is like making love to a beautiful woman. I only get to do it when Billy, Mar when Billy Crystal's out of town. <laughs> and, and I just like, look, it's, yeah. but everybody knew him and Billy Crystal are buddies. They can make that joke. Well, right? yeah. And you get somebody like a Kevin Hart yeah. or maybe somebody like a Joe Coy. Or maybe somebody like anybody else who not everybody in the room personally knows them. Or I, I, don't, I don't know if that's one of the factors as well. And maybe that would help it a bit. <laughs> not really sure. I'm curious to know what you guys think about that. Do you agree with what Kevin Hart has to say? That, listen, award shows aren't good gigs for comics anymore. It's not a good atmosphere for it. I think he's right. But maybe the times will change. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called The John Campy Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.